You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is electric power putting charges to work. And we want to know what is meant by electrical power and how do you calculate the electrical power. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Electrical circuits are designed for a purpose, to power a device, a device such as a light bulb. To power a device, energy is required. So energy is inputted to the circuit at the location of the electrochemical cell in order to move the charge from the low energy, low electric potential location to the high energy, high electric potential location. Once we have the charge at high energy or high potential, it will begin to drift through the circuit and we can put that charge to work. Once the charge reaches the load, its electrical energy is removed from the circuit. Better than removed, it's transformed into more useful forms, the form for which the circuit was designed. For instance, energy, electrical energy reaching a light bulb is transformed into light energy and in some cases thermal energy. Electrical energy that reaches a fan or a motor is transformed from electrical energy into mechanical energy. And the electrical energy that reaches a toaster or a heater is transformed into thermal energy. And finally, electrical energy that reaches a speaker or doorbell is transformed into sound energy. In physics, power is the rate at which work is done. It's a rate quantity, and like any rate quantity, it expresses the amount of change or consumption of something on a per time basis. Electrical energy refers to the rate at which work is done by the energy source upon the charge to move it from the low energy to the high energy terminal. Or it's the rate at which energy is delivered by that drifting charge to the load, the light bulb for instance. The equation for power is the work divided by time or the change in energy divided by time. The unit of electrical power is simply the joule per second as you reason from the equation. One joule per second is equivalent to the watt, abbreviated W. So if anyone asks what is the unit power, you'd say yes, watts the unit power. A 60 watt light bulb is a light bulb that draws 60 joules of electrical energy every one second of time and transforms that electrical energy into light and heat. An electrical utility company charges its customers for the amount of electricity they use during a given month. Here's a sample bill you see above. The month is usually mentioned here. It's the month of April. A meter reading is taken at the beginning and the end of the month, and then some math is done to determine the amount of usage in units of kWh. What in the world are they billing us for kWh? Well, that kWh stands for kilowatt hours. And if you dissect that phrase, kilowatt times hours, it's a unit of power multiplied by a unit of time. And we just learned that power is the energy change per time. So some math would indicate that this power times time is a unit of energy. The utility company is, is billing us for the amount of electrical energy that we use during that particular month. But it's quite an odd unit. Exactly how does that relate to joules? Well, there are people who can figure that out. We call them physics students, and this is how they do it. They would start with a kilowatt times an hour, and then they maybe would convert the kilowatts to watts using a converting factor such as this, and then the hour to seconds using another converting factor. Now, we just learned that a watt was a joule per second, so a watt times a second is a joule. So our last converting factor converts this whole thing to joules, and if I do the math on this, that's 3.6 million joules. And they charged us for 1295 kilowatt hours. Now if you do the math on that, it comes out to be just short of 5 billion joules. That's a lot of electrical energy. I'm going to use these three equations to derive an equation for power that expresses power in terms of the circuit variables that affect it. I'm going to begin with equation 2 and rearrange it to, de to derive an expression for delta E. Delta E is simply equal to delta V times Q. 
I'm going to take this expression for delta e and substitute it into the numerator of the first equation, thus changing that first equation to p equal delta v times q divided by t. I'm going to rearrange this equation to the form p equal delta v times q over t. If I inspect this equation, I'll notice that q over t is the same thing as the current. Just peek up at equation 3 to convince yourself of, self of that. So I'm going to take the current and substitute it in for the ratio q per t in this power equation, and I have power is equal to delta v times i. This ends up being a really big equation that you'll use quite frequently in your studies of the physics of circuits. It tells us that the power, the rate at which energy is delivered to a device, is equal to the current that runs through it multiplied by the electric potential difference that's impressed across it. Here's a practice problem. Alfredo de Dark often leaves his room lights on for no good reasons, at least according to his parents. The de Dark family pays 10 cents per kilowatt hour for their electrical usage. Use this information to fill in the table. Right now I recommend you pause the video and then do this very problem and then when you're ready press play and you can see the answers and hear the solutions at when you press play. Row 1 is done for me, so let's start with row 2. I need to begin by calculating the energy. Energy is equal to power times time. The power is 60 watts, but I need to get that to kilowatts. So I'm going to divide by 1,000, and I have 0.060 kilowatts as the power. Multiply it by a time of 4 hours, and I end up with 0.240 kilowatt hours is the amount of energy used. The Dark family pays 10 cents for every one of these kilowatt hours. So take the 0.240 and multiply it by 10, and you get the cost is 2.4 cents. Not very much, and then divide by 100 to get the cost in dollars. The third row goes much the same as the second row, only it starts with a 120 watt bulb in a time of two hours. So I'm going to take the 0.120 kilowatts, multiply it by two hours, I get 0.240 kilowatt hours, and the rest of this row goes much the same as row two. In the fourth row, I have the power and the energy, and I have to calculate the time. Now, if energy is power times time, then time is energy divided by power. So I'm going to take the 10 kilowatt hours and divide it by the power in kilowatts. A 100 watt bulb is a 0.10 kilowatt bulb. So I'm going to take the 10 and divide by 0.1, and I get the time to be 100 hours. Now to get the right side of the table, I simply take the 10 kilowatt hours and multiply it by 10 cents per kilowatt hour. That gives me 100 cents for the, the cost in cents. Divide it by 100 to get the cost in dollars, and you got a dollar. In row 5, I have to work backwards from the two rows on the right. If I've paid 1,000 cents for my electricity and it's cost 10 cents per kilowatt hours, then I can figure if I take 1,000 cents and divide by 10 cents, I would get the energy used in kilowatt hours. It comes out to be 100 kilowatt hours. Now I know the number of kilowatt hours and I know the wattage, the power in watts. I can convert that power of 60 watts to 0 0.060 kilowatts. And then I can say energy equal power times time, so time equal energy divided by power. I can take the 100 units of energy and divide it by the 0 0.06 kilowatts, and I end up with a time of approximately 1,667 hours. That's the amount of time you have to use this light bulb in order to spend 10 bucks. In the last row, I have the energy in kilowatt hours, and I have the time in hours. The power is the energy per time ratio. So I'm going to take 60 kilowatt hours and divide by 100 hours, and I get 0.6 kilowatts. If I multiply by 1,000, I'll be converting that to watts, and it comes out to be 600 watts. To get the two columns on the far right, I do the usual. I take the kilowatt hours of energy, I multiply it by the 10 cents to get the cost in cents, then I take that cost in cents and divide by 100 to get the cost in dollars. Hey, Alfredo, what's the matter, you, huh? Turn off the lights. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you can find at our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission, a concept builder, and a tutorial page. Any one of these can help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.